All right, guys, how you doing? John from Bra Beard again. Just uh, the people are asking about more stories from Bra because it's there's quite a cool story uh, up until this point. Um, so if you've been watching the video before, you'll know that how the brand started. It started from a mountain bike crash. I broke my neck and back, and it led to making beard oil. Um, a lot of people who've been following the brand for a while, they know that Fred Durst from Limp Biscuit is a fan of the brand. And there's a few good stories behind that as well. So I just thought I'd talk about that today. Um, but it's not all unicorns and rainbows. Uh, so yeah, Fred got in contact at the end of 2013. Um, he liked a tweet and I replied. He placed an order for some products and then I sent them out. And he loved them. He loved the, the merchandise, the beard oils, just the brand. So... Uh, he invited me over to a gig in Glasgow. Uh, Limp Biscuit were playing in Glasgow with Crossfaith uh, as part of the Kerrang tour. And I think that was the 16th of February 2014. So he invited me over. So, uh, yeah. But in the build up to that, my mum had been really ill. Um, and she passed away on the 8th of February, like the week before the gig. So that week, my head was a fucking mess. Like. <laughs> Like, what do you do? Well, I'm trying to grieve and potentially go to this Limp Biscuit gig and meet Fred for the first time. So, yeah, so my mum's uh, funeral, that was on the Saturday, the 15th, the day before the gig. Now, uh, that was the lowest point of my life so far. Um, and Sunday could potentially be the highest point of my life, or one of the highest. So, after, you know, before the funeral and after the funeral, I sat down with my dad and says, look, should I go to this gig and, you know, grab the opportunity? And of course he said yes. And then I thought, well, like, my mum would want me to do it as well. she just, you know, suck it up, quit being a pussy and sitting about the house. Just fulfil what you set out to do. So, yeah, so I went to the gig on Sunday, um, met up with Fred, like, two o'clock in the afternoon, done sound check. Um, hung out with them backstage, had dinner with the band, then for for well, when the gig came, the showtime, we stood inside of the stage with the crew and Crossfaith and watched the gig. Um, so yeah, it was it was an awesome experience, but I couldn't fully enjoy it knowing what had happened the day before. So uh, and Fred never knew anything about this uh, until 2015, 14, end of 2014. When I went over to LA, uh, that's when he found out. So I think I masked it okay. <laughs> and then in July 2014, it was Sonosphere Festival. Um, so Stuart and I jumped on a, a plane, uh, flew down to the gig, uh, watched the Limp Biscuit set, hung out with Fred again. Um, yeah, and just, yeah, we became good friends. And in. October 2014, Fred phoned me and says, look, I'm just back off tour. Do you want to come over for a few days? Uh, just I'll show you around LA and Hollywood and stuff. So I was like, fuck I Just jump on a plane. Eight hours later, I was on a flight to LA. I'm not turning that down. So yeah, um, I don't know. It was a strange experience. Like, what, like, what would you do? Like, you are you? <laughs> you know, your, your parents' funeral was the day before a gig. I think I'd done the right thing in going. It was, uh, yeah, it's a weird one. It's a weird one. Anyway, um, yeah, so I went over to LA in October 2014. Um, I hung out with Fred for like three or four days. He just showed me around the city. Um, went out for meals and stuff. There's a few good stories from that trip, but I ain't telling them online. Um, nah, it's not. It's not my nature to tell them online. Um, and then more recently, we met up in December in Glasgow again. It was Corn and Limp Biscuit were co-headlining co um, a gig. So again, Fred invited me over. Uh, I, I took my sister because this was the the day after my sister's thirtieth. Eh, no, sorry, day before my sister's thirtieth. So. Uh, yeah, I thought I'd take her for you know, a birthday present. So we watched the gig and then went back to Fred's dressing room for the after party. And that went on until the, like, the wee hours in the morning. 
So, yeah, my sister turned 30 in fresh dressing room, which was pretty cool. So not many people can say they've done that. So, I don't know, I, I guess the moral of the story is, if there's an opportunity there, you just got to grasp it, no matter what the situation is. Um, people have asked how the, like, the Fred Durst thing came about, and that's pretty much how it came about. Uh, yeah, so, my situation was far from ideal. It was a really shitty situation at the time, but it turned out all right. And it open, opened up quite a few opportunities. So, you know, I don't know, you just got to take these things as they come. Um, yeah, I'm sure my mum would be proud. I hope she'd be proud. <laughs> I hope so. Um, so, yeah, that's the, the story. We still keep in touch now, uh, Fred and I. And, yeah, that's it. That's it, really. Any questions, just leave them in the comments below. This video has been a bit of a tough one to do for me. Uh, hence, jumping back and forward. It's probably taken about 10 attempts to record this. So, uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Cheers. See you later.